In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear ones, teachers and students, in today's reading, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is being approached and judged by the Pharisees and the scribes, the teachers of the law, accusing him that he is sitting at the table and eats with the, the sinners. In that book, in, that, in this, those times, it wasn't allowed a teacher of the law to sit and eat with the sinners. It was the, considered that they are unclean. So those that were be in touch with them will be considered also unclean. So, and they were murmuring. So how can he that is teaching and doing, performing these miracles can sit down and eat with the sinners? But Jesus knowing what is in their heart, he's bringing up the parable of the 100 sheep. And said, which one of you, having 100 sheep, and if one of them got lost, is not leaving the 99 and go to find the lost one? And when he finds it, he will bring his friends and rejoice because he found it, right? Well, this, this parable was very common for them because that was their occupation, the main, their manual occupation of the Jewish. So, like in the villages, what they would usually, they would have many sheep and they would take turns. My turn is today, so they would go out with the ships and bring them back. Tomorrow is your and your whatever. So, and uh, when they will, sometimes they're getting lost, right? So they will go and found for it. And the other villagers, when they, they will find them, will rejoicing. But see, the thing is that not every single time it can be successful. Sometimes you can look for it and never find it, right? Because either it can, uh, imagine now in the mountains, whatever, can fall down and just die, you know? Or it can be eaten by wolves or coyotes or whatever, other animals, right? So, and their mission can be unsuccessful. But here, bringing up this particular parable, he means us, each one of us. And how many, many times in a family, our children are leaving either for school and they're getting lost. They're getting in different relationships with the wrong people and they are making poor decisions and they're getting lost. And their parents are suffering and they are looking for them to find them, to bring them back, where to bring them back? To the family because they love them, right? So imagine if we are suffering when our kids are living and they don't want to talk to us, imagine how much God suffers and w when we are turning our back to him and we are not going to church, we are not praying, we are ungrateful towards him and the gifts he had granted us because everything we have are the gifts, gifts from God. All these things do not belong to us. They belong to God. <coughs> so, to understand this better, like for example, we have a book, 
So the content of the, in the book belongs to the book or belongs to the writer that wrote the book? To the writer, right? So the same thing with us. Everything we possess do not belong to us. We are just the vessel. We are holders of the gifts of God. They do not belong to us. So that's why we have to always be in connection, in contact with God, to build up this relationship with God and be grateful to Him for all the gifts that He has granted us. And each one we have different gifts, right? Some of you have the talent of singing. Some of you may be good in math. Some of you can be good in arts. Some of, of others can be good in uh, PE, running fast or jumping, or each one has his own gifts, or maybe good in soccer. Or... See, we are different, but each one of us are the image and likeness of Christ. In each, in each one of us, he has implemented, planted these gifts, making us different but at the same time useful to each other so each one of us we have different gifts and different functions right so one is a teacher one is a doctor another is an engineer another is a plumber another is a teacher so and we are creating this big society helping each other only when we are united we can succeed so this is why he is talking about the 100 ships and that if the one is lost, it's very sorrowful. So if we are losing one member of our community, we are sorrowful, right? Because sometimes it's even difficult to replace a person with particular gifts. It's difficult to find a replacement for him, right? And of course it's sorrowful. So if we are losing one member of our family, we are very sorrowful, right? So, but he's saying if we found it, the angels are rejoicing in heaven. And I said, if I give you the example with one of our children, if they are living and living this disturbing life and if we are succeeding to bring him back imagine all the relatives are very happy right we will have a party that he came back our child is back and here I want to share with you a story it's a it's a very interesting story a mother lost her son during the, during the Second World War. She received the letter that he was killed. But they never found the body. There was the explosion. They saw the explosion, but they never saw his body. They saw that he were breaking in, in pieces. And they sent the letter to the poor mother that her son is, is dead. So she went to the church and asked the priest to do the liturgies for her son. So she was doing for 40 days liturgies and after that she was doing like every Saturday she would do the memorial for her son for about seven years. <clears throat> On the seventh year, when she did the memorial for her son, she came home and she invited people from the village to give a dinner for her, for her son's memorial. And what do you think? Her son appeared alive after seven years. He was captured by the Germans and after seven years he finally was freed and he came back and you know 
when they asked him, how, how did you survive? And his answer was that when he was imprisoned, like every Sunday or Saturday when she was doing the liturgy, an angel would come to him and comfort him. So see how beneficial is the liturgies, the church, the prayers that we are doing. This helped him to survive the tortures that he was put to through the prayers, through the intercessions of the holy angels. It's a beautiful, it's, it's a tough story, but it's a beautiful ending. His mother, she had no, no words. She lost it when she, she saw after so many years that she buried, she was going to her, to his uh, grave. Even though she never saw the body, but they still put a grave for him. But through her prayers, because she was faithful as a mother. So see, that's why my dear ones, my little ones, we have to be respectful to our parents. To be obedient to our parents. To listen to our parents. Because what, all they do, they do it for us. Because they love us. And even sometimes they will punish us. They will, they will be strict for us. Not because they hate us. No. The opposite. Because they love us. They want for us a better life. And that's why they are some, sometimes they are strict. And we have to understand that and be obedient. Not starting why my classmates have this. I want this thing too. Do not look what other kids have. Look on the love, focus on the love that your parents provide you. Because this is the actual treasure, not the things, the games or whatever, class, expensive uh, things, no. This is not the way of sh showing love. The way of showing love is being a parent and showing you the way towards God. Because this is our duty. This is our goal, to, work toward, to walk towards God, to be united with God. That's our goal. Because God is the source of life. If we are departing from Him, slowly, slowly, spiritually, we are dying, we are disappearing. So that's why the importance of church, the importance of faith, the importance of God in our love, life, it's so great, and we cannot do anything without His intervention. And love, what is love? Love is God. So without God, that cannot be, there cannot be love. God is the only love. And he gave us this love. First, when he created us. And secondly, when he crucified his body to save us again from the hands of the evil one. See, this is the kind of love. Sacrifice. So, and this is what the parents are doing for us. They are sacrificing their lives for us. They're, they don't care. Many times they are sick. They are in pain. But they are still doing their duties to raise us, to give us an opportunity. To do, they are doing their best for our future. So this is the love that God is looking into. This is what he wants us to do. This is how he wants us to be. So let us try, my dear ones, to do this, to follow the path of our salvation, to follow the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to embrace him and his church in, in our life, that with one voice 
All together we may confess the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.